This is the Kia Nero. It's a family SUV which you can have as a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, and as a fully electric car. But what are the differences between those versions and how do they compare to their rivals? In this video, we're telling you the 10 things you need to know about the Kia Nero. But first, this video is supported by Vitality Insurance. Get up to 25% cash back every month when you drive well. Look in our description below to find out more and go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car. The previous Kia Nero first went on sale in 2016, and it was based very closely on the Hyundai Ioniq. Both of those cars were electrified trailblazers because they were some of the first cars to be offered with hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and fully electric options. While the Ioniq went off sale last year without a direct replacement, the Nero is now back for a second generation. Now, 2016 isn't really that long ago, but Kia right now is very different from what it was back then. For a start, it's got a new logo and it's got a new look, a new kind of design language across its lineup. So with the second generation Nero, you can see there has been a big change in the design, hasn't there? So it now looks quite similar to the Sportage and the EV6 in some ways. And that's not just on the outside, but on the inside as well. What is similar to before is the fact that you can have this car with three different flavors of electrification. So as we've already said, it can be a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, or a fully electric car. It's also longer and wider than it was before, and it sits on new mechanical underpinnings. Now, confusingly, the first gen electric Nero was called the E-Nero. But now for the second generation model, the fully electric version of this car has changed its name to become the Nero EV. And if you do want to know more about the electric version of the Nero, then click on the link at the top of the screen to see our dedicated review of that car. What we're going to do here is tell you a bit more about the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid options. In Kia's lineup, the Nero sits between the much smaller Stonic and a slightly bigger Sportage. And this is also up against other SUVs like the Peugeot 3008 and the Toyota Yaris Cross. But as a family SUV, this is also up against loads of other rivals like the Skoda Karak, the Seat Ateca, the Nissan Qashqai. They might not all be hybrids or plug-in hybrids, but there's certainly lots of quality options. The new Nero's interior does feel like a big step forwards from the old one. So now, as we said, the outside looks similar to the EV6, similar to the Sportage in some ways, and the inside even more so. We're in the entry level two trim with the Nero, and yes, this is the cheapest Nero you can buy, but it still has a really nice look, nice layout. Everything feels solid, well put together. The materials are good as well. If you do go for the higher trim levels, you get slightly plusher, snazzier materials in a few different areas. But all in all, even being in the cheapest version of this car, this is a good interior. Where you might feel a bit shortchanged is with the infotainment system. So you can see you have this eight inch touchscreen here, which is using what is now Kia's old infotainment system. If you go for one of the higher trim levels, you get a bigger screen with a newer infotainment system on it that just looks a bit nicer, works a bit better, and is slightly more intuitive as well. And down here, you will notice that yes, there is a touch panel for the climate controls, but by the standards of most touch sensitive, touch screen setups for climate controls, this really isn't that bad and works fairly well once you've got your head around it. So you can toggle between all of this panel showing you climate controls, or you can change it to some shortcut buttons to use for the infotainment system. So actually, this works fairly well. And even these seats that you have with the entry level two trim are very comfortable. You've got a good amount of side support here. They're very nicely cushioned. So even on long journeys, it's very comfortable inside here. And even if you buy the cheapest version of this car, this interior really is pretty good. The new Nero is definitely better than the old one when it comes to rear seat space. So sat in the back here, you've got a good amount of legroom. You've got a good amount of space under the seat in front of you as well. And also headroom is especially good. It feels quite boxy and high sat back here, as well as being open and airy. And if you go for range topping four trim, then these rear seats recline. But even in entry level two trim, the cheapest Nero you can buy, it's comfortable, it's spacious, and there's even some USB-C chargers back here as well. Every Nero, has a height adjustable boot floor as standard. Now there is 
a big capacity difference between the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid. And it is under the boot floor where that space is lost. So you can see in this hybrid version that we've got here, you've got a decent amount of room there, but in the plug-in hybrid, all the battery stuff that you need, lots of it ends up at the back of the boot under the floor there. So that ultimately means outright capacity, the hybrid is the winner. Both versions of the car have this foldable parcel shelf, which yes, is slightly useless for resting things on top, but it is kind of useful having something that's easy to fold up and stow away if you don't need it. And it also does mean that if you pile the boot high with things, you can still close this fairly easily over the top of all of it. Now, if you want a Nero, a key question for you probably is, do I want a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid? So first, let's explain the difference. Both cars have a 1.6 litre petrol engine and an electric motor and a battery, both a front wheel drive. But in the regular hybrid that we're in now, the battery that this has is absolutely tiny. So it's about 1.32 kilowatt hours. And it can travel on pure electric power alone, but not very far and it will only do it at low speeds. The plug-in hybrid has a much bigger battery. It's a little bit more than 11 kilowatt hours and it also has a more powerful electric motor. So it's faster and because of that bigger battery, it has a claimed electric range of up to 38 miles. So you might assume that the plug-in hybrid is the obvious choice and the best option of the two, but there's more to it than just the numbers because the claimed range might be up to 38 miles but in real world driving conditions from a full charge of the battery in the plug-in hybrid, you're gonna be more likely to cover around 20, 25 miles, maybe 30 miles before the petrol engine then kicks in and has to start helping out. So if you only do very, very short journeys that are less than 20 miles and you can keep the battery topped up, then yes, you will notice a saving in your fuel costs, certainly. But if you also do a lot of motorway miles, or you can't regularly keep your battery topped up, then in that instance, you're almost certainly gonna be better off with the regular hybrid. Because the plug-in hybrid is quite a bit more expensive than the regular hybrid. In fact, you can pay as much as 6,000 pounds more to go to the plug-in hybrid from the regular hybrid. And by the way, if you want the fully electric Nero, then that's another 3,000 pounds on top of what you pay for the regular plug-in hybrid. The only way this argument becomes slightly different though, is if you're a company car driver in the UK, because the low CO2 emissions of the plug-in hybrid and its pure electric range means that it sits in a lower benefit in kind tax band than the regular hybrid. So in that instance, it would be cheaper than the regular hybrid. But for everyone else, the hybrid version of the Nero makes much more sense when it comes to value. Now we mentioned there's a difference in power between the plug-in hybrid and the hybrid. And what that means is with the regular hybrid that we're in now, you'll be able to do 0 to 60 miles per hour in around about 10.4 seconds. In the plug-in hybrid, that drops to 9.6 seconds, neither of which are particularly quick. They're quick enough for regular everyday driving, but in the hybrid that we're in now, especially if you want a quick burst of acceleration, things feel quite sluggish and labored and you can hear the strain in the engine. It sounds a little bit coarse when you're accelerating, but really the pace on offer is fine for this kind of car. And while it's not amazingly quick, this is a pretty comfortable car to do your miles in. The hybrid that we're in is the entry level two and that has the smallest alloys in the lineup. So they're 16 inches and just with every car around, the smaller the alloy, the better the ride comfort. And that's what you experience in here. It's cushioned, not harsh, not thumpy. The plug-in hybrid doesn't ride quite so well as the regular hybrid because it's heavier. It's got a stiffer suspension setup. It comes with bigger alloys. Neither car is the enthusiast choice, really. The steering is fine, but very light. The handling isn't exactly thrilling, but for regular everyday driving, the types of miles you're gonna be doing in this car, it does the job. It's normal for a hybrid car to be priced above a conventionally powered alternative, and that is the case with the Nero. You'll pay a bit more for this hybrid Nero than you would for a Skoda Karak or a Seat Ateca. But this is still very good value. 
because it's very well equipped. Even as standard in entry level two trim, you get LED headlights, adaptive cruise control, an infotainment system. We do though think it's still worth going up to three trim because you get a bigger infotainment screen with a slightly better system on it. You also get keyless entry and some luxuries like heated seats. And the best thing about the Kia Nero is the fact that this family SUV is generously equipped and competitively priced. Don't forget every model is covered by Kia's fantastic seven year warranty as standard too. The worst thing is the fact that the handling could be a little sharper compared to its rivals. So overall, the Kia Nero is a very good family SUV. It's spacious and nice inside, comfortable, decent on the road, pretty frugal as well. So it might not be an outright class leader, but it's certainly got enough impressive qualities to mean that if you're looking for a family SUV, this should definitely be considered. If you want to find out more about the Nero and every other car around, go to whatcar.com to read our extended written reviews. And also on our website, you can get a great deal on your next car. But before you go, if you want to see lots more reviews like this, then subscribe to our channel.